Today I want to show you how to make an audio reactive geometry like this one in Touch Designer. And this project was inspired by a video I watched a few years ago called Outlines made by Lucas Carluck. And I really liked the visual treatment that they use there. And I just wanted to try and recreate something like that in Touch Designer. We're going to start using a sphere here just because I, I didn't want to have a dependency right off the bat but later we can swap this model by something else uh, in this case I have a model of a low poly volcano that I found online and yeah we can use anything so let's recreate this network from scratch the first thing we need here is a sphere sop and from our sphere sop we already drop a facet sop which is what is going to give us the low poly look and sphere the primitive type let's make sure it's a polygon and the detail frequency i want it to be three and we can toggle our compute normals off here because we are going to compute our normals in our facet sop so switch to facet, compute normals on, and unique points on. In the preview, we can already see this flat shaded sphere, which is uh, what we're after. From the facet, give it some space, and let's drop a primitive SOP. We are not going to do anything with it yet, so just leave it here for now. And drop a no. And then from this node, we can already start rendering our scene. So middle click, select comp geometry. Also drop a camera comp. And let's also drop a light. We also need a render top. From this render top, we can give it some space. Let's drop a node here. And I want to call it out one and I'm going to toggle the display flag on. Now let's give our geometry some material. I want to use the fong material and I only want to change one thing on this fong material. I don't want any specular color, so I'm just going to select black here. And I can drag fong onto geo one and select brown material. Um, now I want to see the outlines of these triangles here and we can do that with another geometry. From our facet we drop another node and from this node middle click again and another geometry. This time I want to use a wireframe material. And the wireframe color is going to be black. And line width, I want it to be 6. Drag wireframe on top of Geo2, select parameter material, and we see our outlines. Now let's add a uh, background to our scene. So just before out1, we insert a transform top. And in background color, let's type 0, 0.12. 0 0.12, 0 0.12, alpha 1, and toggle comp of a background color. Now we have this dark gray here, which still allows us to see our black outlines. This is it for the rendering. I'm going to select all of these uh, operators here and toggle the viewer off, just so that we keep our FPS happy. Next, we start with our data. So other way over here to the left, I'm going to drop an audio file in chop. We don't need to listen to the track just yet, so just leave the audio file in here. And I want to combine these channels, so I need a math chop. And under combine channels, I'm going to pick maximum. Next, I need an audio spectrum chop. And the FFT size here, I want it to be 2048. The high frequency boost 0 
and I want to set the output length here manually and I'm going to drag this all the way down to 1 to 8 which is the minimum if I zoom in we can see that there's not a lot of activity on this edge of the, the spectrum so let's trim those values with a trim chop tested this earlier and the number I found was minus 60 next I want to resample so let's use a resample chop and what I'm after here is a number of samples that matches the number of faces in my geometry so we can do that by asking for the number of faces here from our facet sop First, in our resample, we need to go to the common tab and toggle off um, time slice. And under method, I want new rate, new interval. Now, for start and end here, uh, I can leave start at zero, but end uh, it needs a new expression. But we're going to reference our op facet one, and I'm going to do dot num prims to get the number of faces. Because the starting index is 0, 0 to 180 actually gives me 181. So let's just subtract 1 here to get the correct range. And it is important to change the units here to samples, otherwise we get way too many samples. Now we have 180. Now let's select all of these operators, toggle viewer off. I'm just going to align these uh, resample here under our facet so to have a clear relationship and from the resample I'm going to drop a null and from this null I want to branch out three times so the first branch here we start with a math chop and from the math chop I want a rename chop and I'm going to rename the channel from start to position From this rename, I want to convert this to a table, so I drop a chop to that. I toggle include names because I want to see position here at the top, and I'm also going to call this position just so I know which one is which after I have a few more here. The second branch is going to be quite similar, so start with a math chop and then connect a rename and this time we're going to rename from star to scale same thing again let's go with a chop to that also toggle include names and let's label it scale now for the third branch it's going to be a little bit different we want a lookup chop and this time we don't need to rename anything and go straight to that and again include names and let's label this RGB for the second input of our lookup here we need a ramp top and then let's drop a null for good practice and from this null we go to from top to chop you can see our, our RGBA channels here but I'm not interested in the alpha channels so just delete the A and we're left with RGB which we can connect to the second input of our lookup just going to arrange our network a bit okay now we can use some colors here uh, they are closer to the project I referenced earlier so here on this left left picker here I want uh, purple and then here somewhat around 40% I want pink maybe dark pink and some more around 60% I want it back to purple Here we want some orange, some yellow. Yeah, something like that. Okay, 
Now we have our data. Let's select all of these, Google Viewer off. And I want to merge all of these tables into a single table. So I need a merge that, which I'm already going to call data because we're going to reference it a few times later. So select all of the tables and connect them to our merge dot. The method here, I want to use append columns. And now we can see we have our position scale and RGB columns. Now our table is already more or less aligned under our primitive SOP. I want to align it exactly under our primitive SOP. Shift it over here. And in our primitive SOP, we're going to reference table here. We start under the transform tab and toggle do transformation. We can start with scale. On scale X on SX, let's reference our table. So OP data and then in square brackets the first parameter is the row and the second is the column i already know that the second is going to be uh, our column that we labeled scale but the the row is going to be the index of the face that we're referencing here so for that we need to type me the input prim the index now comma and the scale string that i mentioned earlier now, if I try to use this value directly, I get an error. And that is because the first index here is zero. And this is going to read our scale um, value here in our column. We need to, to skip the first row. So we just add one here. We can see that our geometry is reacting. Now let's copy this entire expression and paste it for SY and for SZ. Um, with this, we can notice that we uh, we can see through the sphere, and I don't want that. So let's go to our render here under the advanced tab, and the curl face. Let's select uh, back faces. So now we're only rendering the front faces, and it looks uh, a bit tidier. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did for our scale, but for our colors. So back to the primitive sub under the attributes tab under color let's select add color and now if you still have the same expression on your clipboard you can just paste it and instead of scale we use r and then g and then b okay so now we're getting closer to what we want and we want one more transformation here uh, which is the position and position is a bit different because the translate here the values are already at zero and the faces are not at the center of the sphere they are uh, already uh, on the surface so zero here refers to the pivot point which is the the center of each triangle so if we want to make this bounce from the center of the sphere uh, we need a slightly different expression here let's give ourselves a bit more room and we can paste that expression again and instead of scale we use position and this time we're going to have to multiply this by our pivot point or the center here so we multiply this by me dot par dot px and we can copy this expression and paste it for or ty and just replace the ending by py and then paste it for tz and replace the ending for by pz now you can see that our triangles are translating from the center of the sphere we need to adjust these values so let's start with the translation uh, here in on this math that is connected to the position table let's change the range something like uh, 0 0.1 and min minus 0 0.05 and for the scale let's also change the the range here to something like 1 and 0 0.8 okay so now things are a bit more under control but we can see that the sphere is kind of bouncing as one here and i want the 
I want this to be a bit more random. And we can do that by randomizing our position data here. So let's give us some room here. Just move all of these a bit to the to the left. And I want to insert a sort dot here. Sort dot gives me a, an order method and I want to pick random. And I just need to toggle preserve first on because we want uh, our first row here to be the, the title of the, the column. Okay, so now it's looking a bit better, but it is a bit uh, frenetic. So uh, we need to smooth out these values a bit. So we can do that here after our resample. We can insert a log chop. And we need to toggle log per sample. Now, Things are a bit more under control. Um, it would be nice also to have some movement on the entire model. So let's add a transform SOP here right after our sphere. Transform. And under rotate, we can type abs time dot frame. It is a bit fast, so let's say abs time the frame times 0 0.1. Okay, this is a bit nicer. Um, what else? Let's change our light here. Let's bring it a bit closer. So instead of 10, let's type 4. So we get a bit more of a dramatic light here. And what also looks nice since we're dealing with audio is to kind of change this and make them look a bit more like a dance floor. And we can use um, post processing for that. So open your palette and under image filters, select bloom, drag bloom over here. And for the first input, we want our render. For the second input, we want a ramp top. And I want to change the values here from five iterations to three and threshold 0 0.2. Now we can plug this bloom to our transform and we get this type of effect here. And like I mentioned earlier, we can swap this by any other 3D model. I downloaded this low poly volcano here by Poly by Google. So you can just hit download here or use any other model that you have available. If you have a good model, just be able to drag and drop it onto Touch Designer and it would already recognize it as a file in SOP. I happen to know that this volcano is a bit smaller than our sphere, so I'm just going to drop a transform here and change the scale to 1.5 and then I'll just connect it to our transform here and we have our model there. Um, in this case, we probably need some adjustment to our parameters. I wouldn't translate so much here. I'd say something like this would look better. And we can also plug an audio device out to listen to our track, finally. And yep, this is, this is it. This is the effect. You can try with other 3D models. Also play with the, the ramp, play with the colors, uh, change the range of position and scale, see what that looks like. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, until the next video.